Hey guys, let's do a little bit of math here. So $95 million on a closer gets you a 0-2 record when he uh, comes in in certain games and a blown save. Hmm, how does that math add up? Well, we'll talk about this and the great game by Farmer Valdez today on Locked on Astros. Yainel Diaz, this is Locked on Astros. To Locked On Astros, your daily Astros podcast. Here are your hosts, Eric the Man Heisman and Brett H Town Wheelhouse Chancy. We are Locked On Houston Astros, and we hope that you join us for a daily Locked On Astros podcast. My name is Eric Heisman. You can find me on X at Eric Talkstros. You can find Brett. He'll be here in a second. He got caught in a little bit of traffic coming out of Minmay Park because, of course, he went to Minmay Park. Come on, dude. Not the best game for Houston Astros. But we want to say thank you for making the Locked on Astros podcast your daily listen. Whether it's on YouTube, go and subscribe to us. Go and make us your first listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify, wherever you listen to your podcast. Go and check out the Locked on Astros podcast and make us your first listen. And, uh, Brett, where can we find you at? They can find me at H Channel House on X, Instagram, and TikTok. They can find me at Strohs411 on X and Facebook. Um, always positive, always Strohs. Finally, find me at Back to the Bullpen on t- on um, Instagram and YouTube. Um, man, what a crazy game tonight. I don't know what you said in the intro, but Altuve needs to go to base running school. We need a chin strap for Jake Myers' freaking helmet again. And Jordan Alvarez needs Jobu or something, not the hippo. He needs like the real the hippo. <laughs> no, he needs the Jobu from the major league movie. And, you know, but we held them scoreless for what? Almost a full 18 innings. And then the dude with the weird mustache looks like he came off of comedy central hits a freaking tank over my head in the Crawford boxes and I'm like, this is not the guy that's supposed to beat you. It's supposed to be George Springer. It's supposed to be D- uh, Bichette. I almost said Dante. Um, but yeah, completely different feeling in the ballpark tonight compared to the night before when I was there. But this is baseball. It just hurts a little more because now you're one and five instead of two and four. Right. There you so, go. You did the math there, Brett. There you go. Thank <laughs> so, you. I'm, I'm, I'm getting better. Uh, so, yeah, unfortunately, this was a well-pitched game by Farmer Valdez. He went into the eighth inning with 73 pitches. I believe he finished with 85 or 86 pitches. And I know a lot of people might be saying, well, why did uh, Joe Spada take him out? I think at that point, they uh, you had Ryan Presley, you had a rested bullpen because Ronel Blanco, uh, to his credit, pitched the entire game yesterday. So you had a, a rested bullpen. So uh, there's no sense in tempting fate. Uh, from Valdez didn't walk a single batter. This was a uh, much total different guy than the first game we saw where he walked five or six batters and he gave up a whole bunch of runs. And this Astros starting rotation, Brett, is one of the best in baseball. It's It's got the best ERA, uh, so to speak. But unfortunately, it's the bullpen and today, it just wasn't enough offense. You had the Jose Altuve bomb. That was, I mean, I, I can't imagine what that was like being there just because uh, that went over the train, right? Or over the train tracks? Did not go over the train tracks. It okay. hit. Oh, 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 Altuve. I wasn't in my seat when that happened. I just know it went high. Um, okay. But, you know, seriously, Altuve getting hit by the ball. Chaz McCormick trying to extend a single into a double. That was so stupid. You don't run on Kiermaier or Springer. What was he thinking? That was a terrible, I don't care if you're trying to be aggressive. You're not scoring runs. You're taking runs off the board. And then Altuve's got to realize that his steps are not as long or strides as these taller players. So when he gets 10 feet off the base, he's actually 15 feet off the base because he's got to take more steps. And to get picked off at third base, okay, boys and girls, I'm always positive, always Strohs. I'm positive that the Astros absolutely deserved the L 
in this series. They deserve a gold L around their neck. This was a terrible showing by a professional ball club. End of story. You did not have enough offense. I don't believe in the 10-run curse. We broke that last year. There's no such thing. Curses, this isn't Boston. This isn't New York. We don't believe in curses, okay? Um, the the uniform curse of, of uh, Space City was apparently ended because Ronald Blanco threw a no-hitter and they hit five home runs. So what about that curse? Curses aren't, aren't a thing. Just like jinxes aren't a thing. It's just baseball. Hater, we'll talk about that later. Wow, he looked pedestrian tonight. He can't be perfect every time out. He's been good more than not, but he really had a golden opportunity to get a save here, and he just he just didn't do it. So brutal. Yeah, we're, we kept on talking about Joe Spada's uh, first win with the Astros, and apparently the commissioner uh, reached out to him and congratulated him. I believe uh, uh, some other managers across baseball reached out to him and said, congratulations on your first uh, – major league victory. So uh, that's uh, now he's part of the big boy club. And I know that Josh Hader came over here to be part of that club. But um, in this situation, I know uh, we talked about it earlier, or um, maybe we talked about it off air. I don't remember anymore because it's it's all kind of blurring together. But why not leave Ryan Presley in there? He only threw one pitch. I mean, not one pitch, but he only faced one batter and uh, he got the out. And by the way, did you see the little, uh, star, the, um, what is it, um, the trooper, what do you call it, the Comedy Central? He, he's got the little uh, mustache going to uh, the, the st- trooper. Uh, somebody Super tell me. Super Troopers? Super Trooper, yeah, that's yeah, what it was. That's why I was, that, that's why I, I can remember the name. That's why I didn't want to say yeah. it because I didn't know who it was. But, yeah, I, I just look. But that's but that's baseball. Um, anybody on any night can be a hero. Um, you know, Caratini had opportunities to go up there and do something. Um, right. Jose Abreu, Jose Abreu, um, you know, got, got, he got a hit today. <laughs> he got a hit. Um, and so look, um, yes, I know Altuve was our only run and I'm not, I'm not shading on Altuve, but if you think that Jose Altuve's base running errors did not contribute to the loss, then you're blinded by your love for Altuve. I love Altuve. I would put, my fandom and my love for Altuve against anybody's. I'm dead serious. Like I really yeah. would. I'm I'm not ashamed of that. Hey, but Brett, I, I'm gonna go over your head for a second. Robert Flores says that uh, Altuve is a Hall of Famer, and but he ha- makes some bad base running mistakes. Hall of Famer, so not just you. Of, he's one of the worst base runners in baseball. He, he just is. Yes, he hit the home run. I'm just saying. There were a lot of missed opportunities. Yeah, David talks about Bregy, dude, Bregman. If he gets on top of that ball, if he squares that ball up, that ball's going out of the park. He hit that ball. I watched the replay, and that ball hit his bat, and it literally Eric went up. It was if 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 that ball would have been on a flat plane on a grid, it would have been a perfect ninety degree angle. I've never seen a ball go straight up like that. It was crazy. Look again, guys. It's a marathon, not a sprint. The run's not over. Um, you know, it's, it's not all bad. It, it sucks right now, but we've got to take, take our, we got to eat our crow tomorrow night. The positive is if you win, you win a series, you win two out of three. That's better than going zero and four. I'll take that any day. Yeah, definitely. So I, I, I want to go ahead and mention that if you did prize picks today, one of the options, <laughs> I, I don't know if it was today, but uh, would uh, like Robert Valdez go more or less than six innings? And in this game, you probably would have won if you went with him going more than six innings. So let's talk about prize picks. That's right. Prize picks is here and they want you to check them out. We know that baseball is in full swing. And right now you can answer whether it's strikeouts, RBIs, or first inning runs. Take your pick for more or less. Add them to your prize picks entry today. Get in on the playoff action and went up to 100 times your money on prize picks. The playoffs begin. This is for the NBA, April 20th. The play-in round is April 16th, 17th, and 19th. Well, the Rockets put themselves further behind the eight ball because they lost to Minnesota tonight, so they're going to have to win against the Warriors in Houston on Thursday when they play them, and there's going to have to have some help. 
It is something for every fan from baseball and basketball, the League of Legends to everything in between. You can pick LeBron, Connor McDavid, and Shohei Otani, Jude Bellingham, and so much more. Wow, the irony of this greed. Um, you can play with guys like Meek Mill and Sugar Shane O'Malley and H-Town Wheelhouse. That's right. We're all there testing my skills on prize picks. This baseball season is the most exciting way that I play fantasy sports. And you can turn $10 into $100. Download the app today and use the code Locked on MLB for the first deposit match up to $100. That's right. Prize picks. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy. All right, guys, thank you for making Locked On Astros podcast your first listen every day. Whether it's on YouTube, go and subscribe to it. It's going to make us your first listen on Apple, Odyssey, Spotify. Wherever you listen to your podcast, go and check us out. But go and check out, check out Locked On Sports Day. It's your first ever 24-7 streaming platform on YouTube. And now you can get in on your Amazon Fire TV. Isn't that awesome? Just go look at the free Fire TV channels app and you can search baseball you can search uh, sports news. You can find whatever you need streaming 24-7 right there. Uh, go to Baseball Astros. You'll find us there. So that's pretty cool. So um, we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit more about uh, today's game. I know that a, there's a lot of fingers to point. And I know I kind of teased about Farmer Valdez, but I don't want to – we could talk all about the base running error, uh, Jake Myers tripping over his own helmet or whatever happened there, uh, or all Altuve's base running errors. But the first game, from Valdez looked so – he looked like he was the same guy he was the second half. And then the rest of the starting pitchers, except for Hunter Brown, who didn't go deep, but he didn't look terrible. But the rest of the starting pitchers have, have come up and they showed up. And so from Valdez, he's the ace. So this was his response. And he didn't issue any walks in this game. He went into the eighth inning with 73 pitches. He finished with 85 or 86. Unfortunately, he didn't get a chance to finish the eighth inning. But what these two starters have done has really saved the bullpen for the next couple of games. But it doesn't really matter because uh, the bullpen is a mess either way. Yeah, the bullpen's a mess. Um, you know, Presley came in, got his one, got his one hitter, um, did good. Um, or, you know, he he faced one batter. Very interesting how Presley comes in to Johnny Cash, the lights go down, the flashlights go up on the phone, he gets one outing, or he gets he gets one out. Hater comes in, no fanfare, just comes out, gets on the mound and it's like, I kind of like that. I kind of like how Hater has come into town. He's not looking for horns. He's not looking for a theme song. He's basically saying, I got to prove myself. And look, he started out really good. He's had a couple bad, um, you know, at at bats that he's let the batters get, get the best of them. But the bottom line is this. Josh Hader is the best closer in the game. Ryan Presley is still one of the top five closers in the game. You have a very good back end of the bullpen in Brian Abreu in these three, and they will find their rhythm. They will find their stroke, and I'm not worried about that. I do need to see Jordan Alvarez. I do need to see more out of him. Um, he he got his average, I think, above 180 at one point. I don't know where he is now. I think it was like 170 or something. Yeah, he's sitting pretty low, um, but – He's looking for blowing up games. I don't know what. Anyways, uh, yeah, some of y'all's comments tonight are a little weird. Eric, can you sit still? <laughs> Your camera's making me nauseous. <laughs> Eric is Eric is in an undisclosed location. He's in a secret bunker underground, and I'm back um, home. And, and actually, my computer is totally busted. So. <laughs> I may, um, I'm going to take you to Best Buy tomorrow and see what's happening because um, that's my podcast baby. So I've had that for two years now. So hopefully I could get it fixed because I won't have to buy a new one. And um, I'm we're back out of the hospital. So that's a good thing. But uh, that was just not a good game overall. I mean, pitching wise, if you're a fan of pitching duels, this was great. I know Berrios pitched uh what six innings shut out? I uh, know 
six one run innings, and then you had the eight and one two thirds shutout innings by uh, Valdez. So if you're looking at starting pitching wise, this was a great game. This was an exciting game to watch. Yeah, I don't know. I went to the game the night before. I thought that was exciting. I don't know if tonight was exciting. <laughs> I mean, I mean, the feeling was way different being there. Now, what was cool was I sat next to uh, three guys that were Canadians. One guy that's actually moved to Houston in 2014. And I love these guys. Um, I All the Canadians I met tonight, they're all so nice. And I love talking to them because I love them being from Saskatchewan. And, you know, from, from you know, from British Columbia. Um, you know, I've got family that they're all from Canada. I've got all my family on my dad's side. They're all like lumberjacks up in British Columbia. And so just some really cool people up there. So that was cool. The Blue Jays traveled well. I learned that more and more each time I watch them play. Um, but Fromber does deserve credit. Berrios deserves credit. Um, Bichette came in his first at bat back. And, you know, that, that kid, I mean, we we were talking if Bichette's in that game against Blanco, Bichette may be one of the guys that broke up the no hitter because he's just a contact right. machine. And so all awesome. Pamela York is from from BC. That's right. And I think Pamela's like some kind of a she plays piano or something. She's some kind of artist. That's, artist I've I've seen her on YouTube. And hey, I I met a lot of fans. Um, we got a lot of new listeners, Eric. A lot of people um, heard us for the first time. A, a couple people walked up and said, "Hey, we love your show." Um, you guys do a great job. So thank y'all for, you know, tipping the hat to us. Um, we got some more Astros employees on, on board with us, Eric. Um, so people in the ballpark or at home watching us and hopefully we can make these rough times a little bit more enjoyable. And yes, I'm not giving hater a pass or making a positive out of it, but it is the beginning of the season and I'm not panicking. I think we do a good job on the show of being not hypercritical of being realistic, but also staying on the more positive side where we're not just dogging people out and just crapping on them because that's that's not what I'm doing with Altuve. But the bottom line is someone needs to say to Jose Altuve, Jose, I love your motor. I love your motivation. I love that you want to win. I can't have you taken more than three steps off the bag. I don't even care if you're stealing. You're not allowed to take more than three steps off the bag, especially on third base. And Chaz, when you go to put your head down, think about the outfielders that are on the outfield. Because if you looked on a TV screen and they showed the green, yellow, or red lights, there would be two red lights, one by Kiermaier's face and one by Springer's face because they will absolutely mow you down. Chaz didn't even stand a chance at getting to second. I have no clue why he went. I understand wanting to be aggressive. But if you're going to live by the aggressive base running, you can also die by it. It's kind of like the three-pointer in basketball, right? Right. If you're a three-point shooting team and you're off, I've seen the Rockets miss 19 three-pointers in a row and lose a game. The Astros need to clean up. There were some fundamental things tonight that happened. And when you're scrapping for runs in a game like this, you can't afford to make those mistakes. And that's why I said when we lost, I looked at the Blue Jays guys like, y'all earned that win. We earned that that L, plain and simple. And sometimes that's what baseball does, breaks your heart. I just don't know in the ninth inning if that's the right situation for Jake Myers to be trying to steal base. I so. don't know why Jake Myers was put in for Yiner Diaz. That makes oh, no sense. That I makes my, no, it makes no sense. I know. It uh, makes no, no Yiner, catcher. He is. He just beat out a throw at first. He ran 98.2 miles per hour. He got out of the box, and that's what forced the throw. He's on base because of his speed, and you freaking pull him from Myers, and then his helmet falls off? Bro, I'm sorry. That That's a crappy way to lose. He's exaggerating 98 miles per hour. but, uh, but it was, No, 28.2 uh, miles per hour. That's okay. what I said, 28.2 miles per hour. That okay. was his speed from home to first. I didn't say 98. Said 28.2. Okay. That dude called you know what down there. I'm about to make this an explicit episode and put an E on it because that was a bad coaching call by Espada. I'm sorry. There's no reason to put Jake in there at that time. Right. What happens if you go to extra innings? What Jake, well, I guess, I guess Jake goes to DH Carantini. Well, 
Okay, well, you, know, you so, lose your DH. Okay. Well, never. Well, okay. Well, okay. He DH. I, I forgot he wasn't catching, but still, I, I just I don't know. Like whatever. Um, I guess it's frustrating because I was at I was at opening day. That game we should have won. Yeah. Um, I don't. We should have had more than one run. That that's all there is to it. But you know what? This reminds me of game time because Eric. That's how I got to the game tonight. I got to the game tonight from game time. And you know what? I signed the Crawford boxes for 50 bucks, 50 freaking dollars from game time. I didn't plan it in advance. I didn't look on my calendar in January and see where am I going to be April 2nd? You know what? I looked today on my conference period at school at two o'clock. And I said, hmm, I think I want to go to the Astros game again. And you know what? Thank you, game time, because I all I had to do is browse through the app. Look at the seats, and I'm like, Crawford box seats for 50 bucks? I'm in. You can go in here, look for flash deals, zone deals. And what's cool is it's two clicks and you're in. You got it. And they have event cancellation protection, job loss protection. God forbid you have to use that. But all in pricing, let me know right up front what I was going to be paying at checkout. There were no surprises. The lowest price guarantee, they guarantee me that if I find the same seat in the same location, same section, same row. Well, not the same seat, but the same row and same section. For cheaper, they're going to credit my account 110% of the difference. So I have more money to go to more games. And it's not just baseball games. It's theater. It's whatever you're into. It's opera or Beyonce, the Queen Bee, whatever, the Rockets. Go check out Game Time today. Here's the deal. Use the promo code First Pitch. That's F-I-R-S-T-P-I-T-C-H. For $20 off from March 25th through April 14th only, use the Game Time app today. That's with a qualifying $150 purchase. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Um, so I don't know if this has been confirmed. I'm, I'll have to go back and look at it, or if you want to look at the StatCast right now. But according to Michael Schwab on uh, X, um, Normally, uh, Josh Hader's fastball averages between 96 and 98 miles per hour, his sinking fastball, but it didn't reach, uh, it, it was below 95 miles per hour today. So uh, his velocity was down a little bit today. And um, I don't know if this is just Eric Heisman talking, but he's been used a lot more than I think that He's used to being used uh, traditionally. He he doesn't pitch back to back days. Uh, he doesn't maybe pitch as often. So I don't know if uh, the way Joe Espada has been using him this year. And I know there's there hasn't been any set in stone. Well, I it can't be used back in back days. But uh, you have to wonder what's going on because uh, he every closer is going to blow some games. We know this is going to happen. I'd rather this happen in uh, April than in October. But uh, is this going to be a season-long thing, or is it just just an April thing? He's still trying to get his uh, feet under him, so that's just something to take into consideration. Now, uh, one thing we need to look look at is the velocity. Is this something that's going to be trending downwards or anything like that? Is this fatigue? I mean, I doubt it's fatigue, but uh, is it being overused? Uh, because the bullpen has had been used a lot. Yeah, it has. And, look, I mean – Hater is is a pro's pro, and he probably goes out there and takes credit for not getting the job done. And but if you're Joe Espada and you're any coach in Major League Baseball, you're not going to anybody but Hater. Um, they'll right. get it figured out, you know. Um, and I don't I don't need to go check check Statcast for uh, Schwab. He's he's a reliable source. He doesn't just throw and make up numbers out there. He wouldn't put it out there if it wasn't true. Um, so. I'll take his word for it. I mean, I saw the clock too. And like I saw it, but I wasn't really thinking about it. Um, I saw, you know, the 95 mile an hour and I was like, oh, hmm. I was like, I thought he threw like 90, 97, 98 because from the seats, it looks like a hundred every time just because he's so lanky right. so long on the mound. But um, Yanner Diaz did uh, see, did he, did he get some hits tonight? Because, you know, he was, he was in the DH role and until tonight he was over in the DH role. And so, I think if Yiner's getting hit as a DH, yeah, he was too. Um, Yeah. 
Brett, I, uh, your mic is gone. Oh, we boom, lost your you mic. Go. Okay, you got it? Okay. Yeah, I thought it was my headphones. That's why. I no, was... okay, I'm sorry. So, okay, so, yeah, thank you. Lost Brett, lost mic, can't hear. Eric is still good. Thank you. Y'all are so awesome. <laughs> we need a producer. <laughs> All right. Oh Jesus! All right. So let's talk. I think a little it's about bit time about, to wrap it up. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about tomorrow's game. Um, Christian Javier's on the mound. Um, he looked uh, fairly good the first game. Um, who's on the mound against him tomorrow? Oh, you would you ask me. It? I don't even have it pulled up. Come on, man. You can't I can't even look. I'm on my phone. Oh, I know you, you can. can. It's Bassett versus Javier. Right. All right. So Chris Bassett has had, um, pitched really some good games to get the against the Astros. Most notably, when he, uh, I believe, when he was with the A's, from what I remember correctly. But um, I think that this is a game the Astros have to win. Uh, you have to definitely take this game, and you got to take two out of three. And you got to get, yeah, you got to get more runs than just Jose Altuve's home run. But Bassett is 0-1 with a 7.2 ERA with six strikeouts this year. And when you when you look at the Astros, how they fare against Bassett, um. Jordan Alvarez, 333, 15 at bats, four home runs, nine RBI. Um, Altuve, one home run, two RBI, 27 at bats, 222. Uh, Jose Abreu's 316 against him. Bregman is 300. Most of the lineup has not faced Bassett. So there's somewhat of an unknown. Tucker's one for four um, in 20 at bats. You know, he has one home run, four RBIs, and 20 at bats, batting 100. So you don't have a whole lot of success against him. Tomorrow, Kevin Kiermeyer goes against Javier. He's batting 750 and four at bats, which means he has three hits. Um, but they don't have a ton of success against Javier. So this, if this game goes the way of the Astros, the Astros have to score early. They have to jump right. on Bassett early and often. And they got to put a crooked number. They've got to have a crooked number by the third inning. If they have a crooked number by the third inning, I think Javier comes out and does his job. And saves the bullpen again, and I think I think I think Javier can go a solid seven or eight, and if he can, then that's good. And yeah, look, Matt, you only use. Go ahead. Matt McDeal uh, did the research for me down here. Uh, Bassett is five and three versus the Astros in thirteen games, okay, so deal. I know that he's had a lot of victories because I just remember him, especially when he was with the A's, just dominating the Astros for several times. So. Uh, this is definitely a must-win game for the Astros tomorrow, and you've got to. I know we were coming off that high of that that no hitter and the ten runs, and we just one in five. It does suck, but it's only six games. It's easy to say we're never going to win again, but that's not true. This team no, is too that's, good. No, this team I, is too good, and this, uh, especially once Justin Verlander gets back, once this. Once the bullpen gets on the right, I don't know if maybe at some point you have to go and put Josh Hader as a setup guy. Well, you you, this. well, you've got up here, Francis on paternity leave or on the paternity list. Did you see who they called up in his place? Yes, it's um, Dylan Coleman. Dylan Coleman, yes. And so, yeah, so I, no offense, I don't want Dylan Coleman. Coleman, Colin. I don't want Dylan. I don't want Dylan's Coleman in the game either. I don't want Dylan Coleman in the game. He has no command right now. And if you're worried about the bullpen crapping the bed, look. And I hope I hope Dylan Coleman sees this and it motivates him. And I hope he goes out there if he does and gets gets three strikeouts. Right. I want him to have success. But he didn't show that he has command of that fastball right now. Right. And we don't need someone in there like that. And look, honestly. Everybody keeps saying bring up Joe, Joey Loperfito. Go watch my episode, this show's episode, with Kenny from Astros Future, and he'll tell you why Joey Loperfito is not playing first right now, why he needs to play first several games, because someone said, well, he needs to come up and be an elite first baseman. Well, he's not an elite first baseman. Last year, he was putting the wrong foot on the bag when he was covering first, and he had to be corrected on that. First base is not a natural position. If you haven't played first base your whole life, it's not as easy as you think it is. Just like a money ball. Tell them, Washington, how easy first base is. It's incredibly hard. Thank you. It's not that hard. I mean, that's what it's like. So, yeah, look. Oh, Lopo had six strikeouts tonight. Woo, that's brutal. You know what? Yes. He is human. He's going to have his ups and downs. Um, look, Jordan's batting under 200. 
Is Jordan suddenly not the best hitter on the planet? No, he's still the best hitter on the planet. And so take it one day at a time, kids. It'll be okay. It's a long season. And Eric, thanks for getting us started tonight. Uh, because uh, everybody's going after Adolis <laughs> Garcia because he looks like um, he's doing steroids. Uh, Rangers fans are coming after uh, Alvarez now because they're they're showing him when he was like in the minor leagues. He looked like he a was seventeen skinny kid. And no, 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 no. The size of the size of Alvarez doesn't even compare to the size of Garcia. Garcia looks like a late nineties baseball player. Oh, and Phil Maton, thank you, thank you, and that's all I'm gonna say. Not for Josh Jung, but thank you. That's all I'm going to say. King. And King to whoever wrote the article blaming the Astros for what Meton did uh, while he was with the Rays and blaming the Astros, uh, get a life. That's all I have to say. That's all we got for this edition of the Lockdown Astros podcast. what he was doing. We'll be, be-, be back tomorrow. And we'll, uh, <laughs> yeah, he's just trying to get the nationwide uh, attention. But that's all we got. And we'll see you tomorrow. And go Strings. I'll go ahead and end it so I can record it.